வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோமெடிக்கல் இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்டேஷன் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் செக்மெண்ட் விவர் லுக்கிங் அட் ஸ்டாட்டிக் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ மெஷர்மெண்ட் சிஸ்டம் வாட் ஆர் தி ஸ்டாட்டிக் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸ் அக்யூரசி ப்ரொசிஷன் லினியாரிட்டி சென்சிட்டிவிட்டி ரெசல்யூஷன் ஹிஸ்டரிசிஸ் ட்ரிஃப்ட் ரிப்ரடியூசிபிலிட்டி அண்ட் த்ரெஷோல்ட் these are the static characteristics of a the system then you are also interested in dynamic characteristics this is describing how a measurement system responds when the inputs change quite rapidly or quite suddenly now again let's remember what's considered rapid or what's considered slow depends on the situation depends on the circumstances as the engineer it is your job to identify what's considered slow what's slow for one person might be fast for another person or what's considered slow for one situation might be fast for another situation it's a situation or a circumstance driven driven thing and as the engineer and our as the expert you are expected to know what's considered dynamic and what's considered static in particular you are interested in understanding the input output relationship during time varying changes or during the transients or sudden changes earlier we were looking at static behavior which is essentially steady state of slowly constant values are relatively slowly changing inputs so this is critical for accurate reproduction of the data and accurate control inputs to the feedback system this has critical importance or significance in physiological measurements because these are particularly crucial for ecg eeg blood pressure wave forms and that are constantly change constantly changing means what that are inherently time varying that have time varying nature that are not constant keep on changing so you are interested in understanding your measurement system should have sufficient sufficiently good dynamic characteristics one important aspect is the notion of time constant this essentially dictates how quickly your system responds to a relatively sudden change in the input let's say there is a sudden change in the blood pressure there is a sudden change in the ecg how quickly does your system respond the lower this time constant the better it is the other is the frequency response the first is a time domain parameter which is a time constant the other is the frequency response this essentially describes the system's gain and phase shift change that is how do these things as i'm increasing the gain how does the frequency characteristics change how do we measure this you see what is called as a frequency response curve if you have ever done an electronics lab you know this that is i constantly change i keep changing i systematically vary the frequency of the input and i measure the gain in the output and then i i draw what is called as a frequency response curve and then i compute what are those what are called as you know for example 3 db cut off frequencies gain bandwidth product and so on and so forth that is the range of frequencies within which my system will perform the best ideally you need to have a system that is specific to the application and that has a that works well in the frequencies of interest for the input sig signal so that you will have high gain in that frequency and relatively low gain in frequencies outside that range for example that's a critical need now that also means that the system will be specific and cannot be used for some other purposes we will later learn that different physiological signals will have different frequency ranges so that means one physiological measurement system cannot be used to make measurements 
of another physiological phenomenon or maybe we can use it but the accuracy will not be that high or the system performance will not be specific so you are interested in making accurate dynamic measurements so your system should have accuracy for time varying signals also for signals that change abruptly so accurate measurements of dynamic signals are possible only if i know what is the frequency characteristics of the system so that is what is the bandwidth of the system ideally you need to match the bandwidth of the system measurement system to the input desired signals bandwidth what is the what is the range within which your desired signal is going to fall in so then you have the natural frequency of the system or the resonant frequency of the system this is a critical parameter because the input signal frequencies should be well below this value otherwise what will happen is that you will have undesirable oscillations caused due to resonance or to prevent uh, distortions to prevent unwanted or undesirable oscillations uh, so there are different types of systems linear systems and non linear systems we already started discussing this and then there are frequency responses a linear system essentially means the output is the sum of the outputs of the individual inputs so that is if for one input i'm for uh, for an input x1 i'm having an output y1 for an input x2 I'm having an output y2. If I give an input x1 plus x2, then the output will be y1 plus y2. This is called as a, a linear system. So the output response is the sum of the outputs of the individual inputs, not the sum of the individual inputs, but rather the sum of the outputs of the individual inputs. For example, the output to a sinusoidal input is a sinusoid of the same frequency, but not necessarily the same amplitude. In a non-linear system, there might be higher order harmonics, that is the frequency will change and there will be changes in both amplitude and frequency. But real world systems, real world physical systems are linear in a particular range. And so your goal is to make sure that, your goal is to make sure that the range within which you operate is the range of interest or the range or the measurement range of the system now we discussed frequency response frequency response essentially refers to the amplitude and phase shift for sinusoidal inputs and we are interested in analyzing this for we are interested in analyzing this sometimes using fourier decomposition for example i have this first order system a1 y dash a1 y dot plus a naught y of t equal to x of t for this there is a particular cutoff frequency so then i can actually understand these things for example i also have i can also have a second order system right, which involves d squared y by dt squared for this the behavior of these systems vary depending on what a damping coefficient is for example then i can measure i can discuss or we can look at time domain parameters for example what are some of uh, the outputs for a step response you know a step input a sudden change in the input what is the output the time it takes for the system to reach 63.2 percent of for example a particular value of the final value is called as the time constant the time it takes for it to reach say 90 percent of the output is called as a rise time the time it takes to reach from 10 percent to 90 percent is called as a rise time and uh, the time it takes from 0 to 90 the total time it takes to reach 90 is called as a response time and the time it takes for the system to stay within five percent of the volatility five percent of the final value is called as a settling time the first order system will show a smooth rise a second order system may show 
overshoots, oscillations, and depending on the damping, damping value. With this, we'll end this segment of the video. We'll continue in the next segment. Thank you for your attention.